start it. Welcome everybody. Um, today we're going to be making what is called Texas chocolate sheet cake. This recipe, uh, I don't, I don't think she originated. I, I need, I meant to do the research and it slipped my mind during everything else. But it was made famous by Lady Bird Johnson when she was the first lady of Texas prior to being first lady of the United States when Lyndon Johnson was president. Um, so it is a great cake to take to uh, big gatherings. So if you're going to a potluck or you're going to park or you're feeding a lot of people, it's a really good cake for that. Um, one of the things, the recipe originally calls for an 11 by 17 pan. And those are incredibly hard to find. So what I do is that um, since most of the time I make this cake, it's for a party or a gathering. It's not something I make to just have around the house. I get 11 by 13 roasting pan, the disposable one, so I don't have to worry about getting my dish back. And I get one with the high side, okay, so that it's it can hold the cake and um, with the extra batter because it is, a you know, it, it is a little bit more than a, a regular 11, um, 9 by 13 can hold. But if you get the one with the high sides, it works just fine. So the first thing we've got to do is um, the recipe was, was posted on the um, site. So if you need the recipe, um, we, it's been posted several places. Plus, I can send it to you later. Uh, we've got to grease our, first we're going to turn on our oven, which is, needs to be 350. And then we got to grease our pan. So... I'm gonna grab a piece of shortening. I like to use the shortening sticks that Crisco's does. And oh yeah, wash your hands, which I did. I did before that went on camera. And just, you know, grease your pan, rub it all in there. Make sure you get in, especially if it's one of these disposable ones, you gotta really get in the crevices on the corners. So grease your pan. You can also use a spray, the cooking spray, if you cook, if you spray it really heavily but I'm almost out of that. So I just was like, I'll just use the regular shortening. And uh, one thing about cooking you're gonna know is you get your hands dirty. You can't really um, cook and keep clean hands. So you tend to wash your hands a lot. So we're rubbing that all over. I need a little bit more. So I have posted the ingredients on the Discord general event chat. After this has uh, been streamed and is on YouTube, I will edit the description do -do -do down below um, to have those ingredients for you. So if you're watching on the YouTube stream, um, I will put it, it'll be in the do -do, do And then I want to apologize to the Texas for um, I just kind of glanced over and I saw Starshine and I didn't see your picture with the green. Texas and I'm so sorry. For uh, my mom always used to put the shortening on a paper towel and rub it, but on these pans, especially with these corners that have the ridges, it doesn't get, if you have the paper towel there, it really doesn't get in the ridges well enough. So um, I use my hands and there's really not else you can do about that. So. I have a quick question. Nice and greasy. Question. Go for yeah. it. What's the question? Whenever I bake, when I have to grease the pan, I always use a mixture of butter and flour. Do you have? Is that just a personal preference to use the Crisco, or does it add a different kind of flavor? It doesn't really add any kind of flavor. Uh, butter and I've used butter and flour. If I'm doing a crusted like a pound cake, I'll use sugar and butter. Um, with this recipe, I, I usually just spray my pan with Pam, but I, I didn't really check to see how much I had. Um, you don't need to grease and flour. You just need to grease. And if, you, if you're cooking and, and you do what the recipe tells you to do, when you grease and flour, the flour does leave a little bit of a crust on the outside. Um, but um, with just greasing it, as long as you're doing it really well, uh, I, I, it doesn't leave that crust. So, but it still keeps it from sticking. But again, look at what your recipe calls for. This one actually just says grease the pan. So that's what I do. Thank you for that. And thank you for As you hear from uh, Her Majesty Surreal, if you've got a question in time, you are more than welcome to unmute your mic and, and ask that just as Iris did. Thank you very much, Iris. If you'd like to be featured where she can see you, um, or where the YouTubes can see you. Go ahead and turn on your video as well. 
if you're cooking along with her, which was um, definitely encouraged, and you have all the ingredients, flip on your video, cook right along with her. Coming up uh, after this is going to be Sir Gavin. He'll be chef. He's also one of the raiders. And then after Sir Gavin, we'll have Ayanka making the main course for tonight's feast. Okay, and this is definitely not a healthy recipe because the next thing we do is we take two sticks of butter and we melt it with um, we melt it with four tablespoons of baking cocoa, unsweetened cocoa, just like Hershey's, Nestle's. I try to use Ghirardelli's when I can find it, but I can't always find it. Um, and a cup of water. So we're gonna throw that on the stove and melt. So yeah, if you're looking for healthy baking, don't don't talk to me. Everything I make usually has two or three sticks of butter in it. And a lot of my recipes have heavy cream and it's just, it's, it's why it's delicious and we That's all love it. That's why I'm so fluffy. But <laughs> shout out to, I think it's Starshine who turned on her video and it looks like she's baking right along with you. All right. Absolutely. I see her counter and things. She also painted along with us um, last night with Midnight and Inebriart. Um, we did this really interesting mind warping painting um, that was a lot of fun. So she's participating right along. It's good to see her turn on her video and show us what she's doing. Feel free to continue to do that through the hour. So you have the two, yes, please feel free to share. So I've got my two sticks of butter melting. I'm adding four tablespoons of cocoa. So here's your Hershey's cocoa. Oh, I'm pointing around. Yeah, it looks not like a commercial. Level, so it's not yes, heat. I level it on the side of the pan. I do that too. Um, so you end up with a perfectly level tablespoon just by putting it on the inside of the container. And that way you don't get another knife dirty, but Yes, a uh, good call, Claudia. I just level it on the side of the container. And that's going into your butter mi mixture that you're melting? Going into the butter mixture on the stove, which you can't really see. Um, so it's two, two sticks of butter that are melting, and then your four tablespoons of cocoa. Uh, this cake is not an especially chocolatey cake. If you're looking for a really, really rich, decadent chocolate cake, this isn't it, but it's still really good. Was the water that we were supposed to put in the pan too? Uh, two sticks of butter, four tablespoons of cocoa, and then we're gonna put in a cup of hot water. Hot water, okay, thank you. Thank you for joining and cooking along and asking those wonderful questions. We do appreciate the interaction. You'll have to tell us after feast um how that turned out and if it was as yummy as i'm remembering surreal's chocolate cake is because i think she took yes, us out to you, you've one. you've had this several times at park okay um and i have i drooled over it every single time <laughs> so okay well, well i'd like really to announce that this is the first time i've actually baked anything at my new house <laughs> So that's always stressful baking in an oven for the first time because you don't know if it cooks hot or slow. So it's uh, this oven in this place cooks a little slow. So it always, you know, it always takes time to 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 work that out. But um, yeah, so we'll good. Good. Congratulations. Congratulations on having a new home. Thank you. That's on the new place and, and on the courage to to bake and share your baking experience with us while we attempt to do a Julian Child um, in your yes. new place. Oh, that's right. I was going to do Swedish Shelf. The feed, the feed, the body. The food, the feed, the one, the dough. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's not helpful. You actually have someone who's trying to follow along. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to stir it a little as, and again, I know y'all can't really see. Well, maybe you can. Um, so on the stove, on um, a low heat, not uh, or like medium low. You don't want it real high because you don't want to get super hot super fast. Um, you want it to melt and blend together and just kind of stir in your cocoa to your water and your butter. And then also, you know, you add hot water, obviously it helps everything melt faster.
So we stir, it's nothing like watching something, you know, cook. It takes forever, right? That's why they pre-do everything on the cooking shows. Yep. So we'll feel free to, well, you know what? We had some more questions come in, okay. actually. Yeah, and, and I'm so glad that they did. So let me pull those up for you. So while we're waiting for things to melt, you can answer some more questions. Okay, so what's the question? Right. So the first question was, are UFOs real? Am I what? Are UFOs real? Um, I don't know. Um, I mean, I think the universe is humongous and I think the concept that we're the only intelligent life there would be an entire waste of space because I mean, the fact that it's this basically infinite in size and we're it, I mean, talk about putting all your eggs in one basket. And right now, personally, I don't think that we're, we're doing that great as far as humanity goes, treating each other well. So, um, and as a crafter, I, they're real. I, I think, you know, I hope that they're real, but do, do I, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I think that's what and as a crafter, I took that question is yes, UFOs are totally real because they stand for unfinished projects. Oh uh, well I have one in the house, so definitely. <laughs> All right, your next question. Who runs Barter Town? Oh, uh Master Blaster runs Barter Town. What do you think? has been the best part of your reign so far? Giving out awards last night. <laughs> that was fun. It wasn't the engagement? Well, no, I mean, that was amazing, but as far, that was a personal thing. As far as the reign goes, I mean, it's, I don't, everyone, you know, I knew what I was getting into. I knew it was gonna be stressful. I knew it was gonna have a lot of garbage that goes with it. Um, but the giving out awards is the fun part. Then the next day, of course, you get texts from people going, well, why didn't I get that award? And you're like, um, okay. But for that moment, it's a lot of fun. So, all right. So I'm turning off my heat. We're all melted. We should have everything smooth. No cocoa sticking to the bottoms or the sides. I can't really lift it up for you to see or it'll spill everywhere. Okay. We can see it perfectly fine. Can you see it? Yeah, so you want to make sure there's no cocoa stuck to the sides. All right, and we're going to pour it into our mixing bowl. Pour it into our mixing bowl. All right. Okay, so to our mixing bowl and our chocolate melted stuff, we're going to add two cups of flour and two cups of sugar. Um, so I've got everything out. Um, cooking tips, you should always have your ingredients out and ready to go before you get started. It just makes everything smoother. And then you can also, like I said, make sure you have everything on hand. You don't want to be in the middle of cooking and find out, oh, I need this and I don't have it and I have to leave to go to the store if I want to finish. So this one, obviously flour, the back of a butter knife, and you just run it across the top to level it out. And um, you don't have to sift your flour. Uh, typically, you only really need to sift flour when you're doing really um, delicate pastries. Um, so things like cookies and cakes, you don't really need to sift your flour, especially with modern flours. A lot of times people had to sift flours in the old days because the, the flours they would get from the store weren't as well milled as what we use today. And it's just general all purpose flour. And then we have two cups of sugar. Are we hand mixing or using electric mixer? I'm using an electric mixer. I'm using my wonderful KitchenAid that makes me so happy. So same thing with our sugar. We're going to level it off, make sure it's all smooth, pour that now, in. If, if someone doesn't have this KitchenAid, can they use a hand mixer? Oh, sure. I used to use a hand mixer when, uh, for years. Yes, definitely. Cakes are very forgiving. Um, meringues and uh, things that require lots of mixing. 
Those you pretty much have to have. You can use a hand mixer for those too, or whipped cream. Um, I'm just boiled. But yes, you don't actually even really need an electric mixer for a cake. You could use a whisk, okay? Because cakes are very forgiving. You're pretty much only mixing things until everything is incorporated. And um, then you also, um, what was the word I was going to say? You don't want to over mix. If you over mix, it kind of deflates your batter. So uh, it's one, cakes are one of those batters that you can use a whisk, we're spoiled. So if you have just a hand electric mixer, that's fine. If you have just a whisk, you're gonna have to work a little bit harder, but that's fine too. But you don't wanna over mix it. Although again, cakes are forgiving. So if you over mix it a little, it's not gonna kill you like some recipes will. What consistency or what will it look like when I know I mixed it enough? You can't see any more of the salt and the sugar. It's all smooth and everything is um, brown. It's going to look like brown liquid and it's going to be um, consistent. Oh, I would help if I plugged in my mixer. All right, so I'm going to mix it on a low speed. And I'll show you what it looks like. You just want it smooth and not lumpy. So I started it with low because if you put it in on high, the bat with the mixer, it usually spews flour all over your kitchen. So I am going to bump it up just a little for just a few seconds. Kid alike who also wanted to see surreal spray flour all over her kitchen. Right. If you turn on your mixer when your flour is on, you know, and you turn it on too high right off the bat, you get flour all over your kitchen. I have learned that the hard way. So. All right. So to for our viewers, I'm going to just tilt the camera. You can see, I don't know uh, if you can just see it's a thick chocolate liquid. And there's no lumps. And you don't see any of the flour and sugar in, in, in it anymore. So it's a smooth, thick chocolate liquid. All right. So next, we're going to add two beaten eggs. Okay. So a baking tip for your eggs. They, they incorporate into your recipe better if they're room temperature. So I took these out at 11. It's okay if you didn't. Okay, it's not gonna hurt anything if you didn't. It's just slightly better if you get your eggs to room temperature. I'm not 100% on the science why, and I'm not gonna pretend that I know that, but I do know it does work a little bit better. So I have my bowl, I have my eggs. I also ran, put them in a bowl and put, ran hot water over mine just to take off that chill from the refrigerator. Oh, that's a good idea. But yeah, the chill of the refrigerator, especially if you're putting eggs into something warm, you want to go ahead and um, get them to room temperature. Otherwise, they curdle sometimes. So breaking up Adding my meat. everything with my baking. And slightly beat. So we're beating our eggs. Like we're doing scrambled eggs. Do, 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 do. All right. I'm gonna Check real quick and go, hey, Laura. Man. Put them in our mixture. Okay. Okay, so we have our egg. And then one half cup buttermilk. Usually I get a pint, but the grocery store didn't have it by the pint this time so I've got a whole quart of butter I mean a, yeah it's a quart of buttermilk two quarts it's half gallon it's a good thing I actually really like buttermilk so I'll actually drink this I don't know that you anybody else likes it. buttermilk but I mean not a lot at once you can't really chug that stuff but um see and notice I I'm looking uh put the put it down get it eye level make sure it's all flat you want your measurement correct. There we go, that's better. So it needs to be buttermilk because the raising agent is the buttermilk and the baking soda. So 
and we're adding our eggs and buttermilk. One teaspoon soda and one teaspoon vanilla. So we've got our buttermilk. That says, wait, it says half cup. Oh, it's a half cup of buttermilk. I almost put in a cup. Sorry, I am a little nervous and I'm trying to move quickly so we have time to get it baked. So it's a half cup of buttermilk. As long as you can get it into the oven in the next 40 minutes, it'll be fine because if you have to ice it while it's hot. So if people want to see how the icing goes on, I got to get it baked and then mix the icing and put that on. Okay. So. Well, if for whatever reason it doesn't and you do have to kind of get that icing on later, we have Raider presentation stacked up all the way till five o'clock tonight. Oh, so I can, so I can bump in and go, yo, get out of my space. No. <laughs> yeah, my reader will understand. Yes. Well, see, you have Sir Gavin coming up next and he is on channel and listening. And so I imagine if you've put it in and your time has run up, but you still have like 15 minutes of time, baking time left. Um, we can probably ask Sir Gavin if he wants to jump in early and then we can take a little break from him midway through to do your icing and stuff. Okay. The icing is real easy. So we have a teaspoon of baking soda. Again, not baking powder or it won't rise. Baking soda. You're adding the buttermilk. That's your raising agent. Then a teaspoon of vanilla. I am very spoiled. I live near the Mex uh, near Mexico. I can get real Mexican vanilla. Try it actually makes a huge difference. If you can get now your regular grocery store vanilla extract will work, but Mexican vanilla is it really is better. So and I do tend to use a different teaspoon for my wet and dry. I I just started doing that. I don't know really have a logical reason why. It seemed to make sense to me, I guess. All right, so we're going to turn the mixer back on. Yeah. Just double checking we got everything in there. And again, start slow or you end up with slop all over your kitchen. Again, uh, hit the like button if you wished um, Surreal had turned it on too fast. <laughs> Talking to uh, YouTube, I uh, hope uh, hit the like button. Okay, you don't need to mix it too much. You're just incorporating all of the egg. Make sure the egg and the soda are incorporated. All right, and you've got your greasy, greasy pan. I got your beater. This is where my daughter is usually hovering. She's with her dad this weekend. She would be usually hovering around the kitchen waiting for this part because she likes the beaters. And if this, if I wasn't on video, I'd probably lick it too, but. As long right. as the beater doesn't go back in the batter, I say you should totally lick the batter. I'm not going to do that on video. <laughs> I might lick the bowl though. <laughs> <laughs> so I have my rubber spatula. These are the best for cooking. All right. So we're going to pour it into the, into the, the grease pan. Scrape the sides. Make sure you get it all in there. Scrape your sides. Now, I only had a 9 by 13 pan, so I'm saving some of mine that I'm going to put in a That's cupcake um, pan. That's perfect. Do that. Because if you fill up the 9 by 13 that has just a regular size, it's going to be too big. And it'll, it'll overflow. Because, the, again, the recipe does call for an 11 by 17 or, two, or, um, more, or two pans. So, um, so yeah, I modify it by getting the disposable nine by 13 with higher sides so that I don't lose my rise. It doesn't overflow all over my oven. All right. So we're going to pop this in the oven. The 
recipe calls for 20, 25 minutes. But again, that's for an 11 by 17 pan. Um, plus my oven does cook a little slow. So I'm gonna set the timer for 25 minutes and we'll check it then. And um, see, I, I, I think it's gonna take closer to 35 minutes, but I'm gonna go, in fact, I know it's gonna take, but I wanna make sure that people are adjusting to their ovens. So again, the original recipe says 2025, 20, keep an eye on it. Um, so I'm setting mine for 25. <laughs> My dog's barking at the cat going across our driveway. Um, Pepper, he's not going to hurt us. Okay. And so, yeah, uh, face the batter. It's good. It's good. So, I mean, there's really nothing else to do right now while the, the cake bakes, except for, you know, lick your ball. This is when I usually do my dishes. Mmm. I just thought my good. <laughs> Yeah, I just got chocolate on my chin. All right, does anybody else have any questions? Will I pig out on cake batter? Mm, that's good. Awkward silence, everybody's quiet. Any questions? I'm trying to do my dishes to get ready for the right? frosting I need. Right, I'm just like, people don't wanna watch me do my dishes. So yeah, <laughs> but uh, I also don't have a dishwasher, so I tend to obsessively clean while I cook because if you wait to the end, there's just too much dishes and there's really even, not even counter space for that. So I am going to do my dishes. If anybody wants to keep chatting with me, I mean, I'll, I'll move the camera so you're over my sink and people can talk to me while I'm doing my dishes. <laughs> Are there any substitutions you can put into this recipe? Like, for instance, uh, using bar chocolate instead of cocoa or using a different kind of flour? Um, sure. I mean, it's unsweetened cocoa, right? So unsweetened chocolate, the difference is, is that the cocoa, you would have to reduce the amount of butter because in bar chocolate, this is what, what is, it's cocoa mixed with, uh, emulsified with a fat. Um, and that's what gives it the bar consistency. So if you're going to use bar chocolate, you would need to reduce the amount of butter or it's going to be a real greasy cake. Um, and I'm not sure how that will turn out. So um, I'm not good at math conversions. I know that some people who are really, really, really expert scientist people would tell you exactly how much to reduce the butter by uh, if you're choosing to use bar chocolate instead of the cocoa. Um, the different kind of flour, um, I've always just used regular flour, but if you want to experiment, I mean, most of baking is trying something and seeing if it works. I mean, I follow a recipe, but I modify recipes all the time um just to see hey let's you know if this turns out let's try that or maybe it'd be good if i added this inside of it so sometimes you're just following your recipe religiously so if you're a new baker definitely follow your recipes until you kind of get an idea of how things work and once you're more comfortable then you can start experimenting and seeing this you know you know this works you know this doesn't um see how different things affect what you're making so did that answer your question? So yeah. Great question. Thank you, Iris. Again, if you've got any questions, you're welcome to unmute or turn on your camera. Starshine, did you have a question? Yeah. Um, now, do you mostly use cookbooks? Like many years ago, I would use like family pass down cookbooks but now it seems like everybody's turning to Google to find recipes. What? Oh, oh this okay. This recipe I got from my mother who got it from a lady at our church when I was in like elementary school. And then, so I have a bunch of family recipes in this one. Um, Is it handwritten? Yeah, I wrote them out. Yeah, so they're all handwritten. Um, 
recipes and you can see they're used because there's stains all over them <laughs> right so there's chocolate so here's my chicken and dumplings recipe and then whenever uh and this one when i modify it or changes i write the change and the date and the reason why so like here's my my aunt, great 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 aunt edna's chicken and dumplings recipe and I have modifications at the bottom as in what I've done to change it. Um, so the next time you come over, can I request the chicken and dumplings? Oh, sure. Those are easy. I tried to show people how to do it in pictures and it didn't work very well. <laughs> it's something that you really so have then to see someone do because if you try to describe how you roll it out and cut them out, it's kind of like, what? But yeah, no, chicken and dumplings are easy. So we'll have to do this again, I think. Okay. So yeah, um, that's what it was when I was trying to do the chicken and dumplings. It was for Shelby's birthday that I made them because that's one of her favorites. That um, I realized that setting it up in the kitchen and trying to record without somebody to hold it, the phone is really hard. So I just used my laptop and I kind of built this stand out of books to make it work better. But yes, I have. Well, it seems to be working really well. Women in my family live forever. Uh, meaning, like, they, my great great grandmother didn't pass away until she was 103. And her sister died when she was 106. So the, the, the chicken and dumpling recipe is from my Aunt Edna, my great great grandmother's sister. And, um,. And so this is a cook. like so I have year old recipe. recipes that have been in my family for generations. Um, and then, but yeah, and then I, but to answer, go back to Star Sunshine's question, I do also get a lot of recipes online um, because you can search and get reviews. I mean, sometimes when you get in a cookbook, you know, if you've never had anyone who's made it before, you're not really sure what you're going to get. Um, and so I, all recipes is a really good source of free online recipes and there'll be reviews and the people who have made the recipe talk about what worked, what didn't, or modifications that they've made. Um, and that's where I get a lot of recipes for things that like, you know, really out of my box that I've never made before. Um, and then you just try it out. Some, most of the time they work, sometimes they don't. So... Next question that came in from earlier, unless someone uh, currently connected has a question. Okay. So the next question that I have from my batch here said, where do you want the kingdom to be in two years? Uh, well, first, my first goal is to get us back to playing in person. Um, Obviously, I mean, COVID is, it sucks for everybody, and there's no predicting how long it's going to take and where it's going to be. Um, what I would like to see, um, of course, I'm heavily involved in Spring War. I would like Spring War to be the um, premier event of all of AmpGuard. Uh, it's not just enough to have a lot of people show. We need to have a very high quality event, um, which, you know, feasts. Our Raiders got that covered. I love my company. I'm not the feast person. That's Gavin and Greasy and Crom and Catherine. Uh, and well, actually, all of them do it. So, um, but the quality of feast and food is incredibly important. And then the quality of battle games is incredibly important. Um, I would like us to see, be as economically, you know, we, we right now, we, you know, Spring War is expensive and it's our biggest fundraiser. We did make money this year. We did not make quite as much as we had in previous years, just because some years different costs come up that are different. Like two years ago when we had the hay fiasco, that cost us a lot of money and we didn't make as much money on the event. Um, or that was three years ago. Um, I would like us to see a, a warmer, friendlier kingdom. Um, I think that I don't want to say names. I don't want to call people out, but it gets frustrating seeing the grudges just continue. And it's, it's like, if all you are here to do is to ruin someone else and, and point out their mistakes, then maybe you should just stay home, <laughs> which, you know, is not a nice thing to say, but 
I mean, let's go back and look at why do we really love this game? Why do we really play this game? Why do we spend the hours and hours and hours making things and designing things and, and thinking of things and practicing our swings and lifting weights in the gym and all the things that are doing the paperwork that's required to keep the kingdom going. And it's, it should be about us having fun. Um, and last night during the sparkle, um, Q and a uh, midnight talked about that moment when you first showed up at amp garden, it was amazing. And how do we recapture and keep that moment and then how do we make sure we're creating that moment for everyone else? Um, it, I just wish that we could take a step back sometimes and ask ourselves, is this, you know, is this really why I'm here? Let's, let's get back to love the game and not trying to hold grudges and be angry and admit that I'm right and you're wrong. You know, that's, that's what I would like to see. Thank you very, very much. Uh, do we have any other in and out that do you have something to say that was at uh, work he's been listening there. no i'm i'm currently working and just oh, okay. keeping us in the background and realized that i had somehow left the voice chat and it's like it's been really quiet for a while <laughs> okay. so he's just joining so for our wonderful background almost done. awesome thank you um do we have uh, i know that we thought of a monarch on channel um and someone from from wetlands i see sir gavin on there um i guess let's open this up for kind of conversation where would you see Heck yeah for the first time i mean we can see people yeah so um majesty before you that do that now? before you do that may i ask uh, how much time has passed? I forgot to set my timer. <laughs> I'm at 13 minutes and 30 seconds left, and I set my timer for 25 minutes. So that's, let me math. 25 minus 10 is going to be, it's so 12, about 12 minutes and 30 seconds have passed. Thank you. Um, and just so that those of you who are just joining us, Starshine is cooking. Uh, baking along with surreal. So having that time is important. Um, Admiral, I see you on the channel. I, I think you're listening. Hope you're listening in. Um, yep, I'm here. Awesome. Uh, are you feeling comfortable to turn on your... Okay, I always put my hair up when I cook. My hair is in the food. So then let's... If anybody let's, uh, else has ask long hair, you soft question like then. Soft. Admiral, um, you just become a kingdom. Where would you like to see your kingdom in two years? Oh, that is a good question. Um, in two years, I would like to obviously see us um, be playing as we used to, with you know, hopefully COVID being stable at that point, um, hopefully gone um, with the vaccine and it being completely safe for all of us. Um, I would like for us to be able to not only visit each other's parks again, but be able to uh, leave our kingdom and visit other kingdoms. I also, um, in two years, I'm hoping that we can get into a groove of the sort of the, the cornerstones of, of what we're creating in this moment. Um, there's a lot of sort of landmark decisions we're making um, as a kingdom right now. And it's going to be basically just getting used to um, the choices that we're making, right? Um, we have an emergency all thing going right now for the kingdom language Quora. Um, it does not seem like there's a chance it will fail, so that's good. Um, but there are changes. There are lots of changes that you know we've never had to um, even so much as contemplate before. So we have to fully understand them and integrate them into um, the way that we run things. So it's an adjustment period. I'm hoping by, by two years, this becomes, you know, the norm and that you know, it's not a lot of people getting confused on old methods and things like that. I'm hoping by that two year mark that we will be well established in, um, in our roles and with the community and how everything functions. 
So I'm hoping for normalcy and for consistency. And I'm hoping that um, the leaders that come after me will be able to sort of pass on the torch of what we're starting now to make sure that um, we don't lose the progress we're making now. So I guess that's it. Thank you so much, Admiral. Um, she's from the Nine Blades, which is a kingdom out in Canada. They recently got promoted to kingdom status, uh, what, like two weeks ago now? Yeah, yeah. Not for like, like two weeks ago now. Well, cool. Thank you so much. Are you ready for your next hardball question? Me? Yeah, yes. bring it. At this point, I'm ready. We talked about your vision and then Admiral's vision for her kingdom, where you want the kingdom to be in two years. But where would you want AmpGuard as a whole to be um, in two years? I think AmpGuard, uh, we, we obviously, I mean, if you, we're going through a lot of changes, right? Um, and then we, you know, we're also in the middle of wait, or not in the middle, we're waiting to see the outcome of this, um, the, the copyright um, ownership. It's not a suit, it's, it's a court action. Obviously, I would like that to be over and AmpGuard, the name belonged to us. Um, I think that we need to find a middle ground in AmpGuard. I don't want to say that we need to ignore the progressiveness. We want to make sure that all of our people of color and our LGBTQs and everyone feels safe and welcome and that we're not, you know, promoting racism or exclusion in any way, shape or form. But we want to also make sure we're protecting, you know, we protect everyone. Obviously, I don't really want to protect racists, but um, which so that's not what I'm saying. But we want to make sure that instead of being so far that, oh, yeah, we need to let everybody say whatever they want or, hey, you, you need to watch absolutely everything you say, which, of course, you know, you don't want to have racism. You don't want to have exclusionary, um, but it needs to be equally um, enforced. And I'd like to see, see us in the middle, you know, of course, protecting the rights of everyone without being so extreme. Um, I also think we need to recruit a lot. Uh, and videos like what Nine Blades put together and uh, Viridian Outlands put together for their, you know, for their presentation to the com were incredible. And if we could, we need to up our numbers, get more people in, in excited and involved, and um, get get people excited to play again and coming out again. Um, so I mean, I think overall, AmpGuard needs to work on on finding middle ground. And recruiting, you know, making sure, you know, the middle ground does protect the people who need protecting because there are people, you know, we do have groups that have been um, marginalized and they do need to be included. And of course, that's important. Uh, but we don't want to um, exclude people and other people in our in our efforts to try to in make sure everyone feels included. Um, so I don't know. I'm trying to I'm skating through real dangerous area. <laughs> and I'm trying to be real careful about what I'm saying. So uh, these were probably those hard questions that you would have hoped for your queen Q&A right? on Friday. Uh, I, yeah. I just think that- I found I mean, these on Facebook after. I mean, I think divesting of the AmpGuard main plus Facebook group is important. I think the CK itself trying to, Facebook is a horrible place for business. It's not conducive to conducting business. It's a social group. And so we have no control over the algorithms that make sure you receive your notifications in the order. Like um, Jason had posted something on the BOD page that I didn't see in my notifications. It didn't come up. So, you know, this was something I needed. And I'm like, I'm just grateful I happened to go look there this morning because I was looking for the time for the BOD meeting. And I was like, I missed this post entirely. Oh my goodness. So um, we need to move into... I mean, Facebook is great for recruitment. It's great for building excitement and, and helping people socialize within AmpGuard. But as far as AmpGuard concerned, we need to get to a, a, a communication tool that's not Facebook-based because it's, it's horrible for actual conducting a business. So um, I'm really, really grateful to Tork to adding the, the email capabilities so that we can email people directly when something, you know, when... When we had our all thing yesterday morning, I received an email with the agenda. I received an email with the Google Meets. Um, and that's what we need to move to. It's, it, that's actual communication, not, hey, we posted it on Facebook. Why didn't you see it? And because it, that's not very effective. People have to be very, very proactive to make sure they don't miss things that way. Um, 
as far as um I'm losing my train of thought. But, um, I just I think AmpGuard needs to recruit. We need to, you know, move away from from Facebook as our primary business conduction tool, and um, we need to, you know, protect the people that need to be protected without marginalizing everyone else. Thank you very very much. Um, we've got about 15 minutes left. How are you on your cake timer? How long until that cake comes out? 45 seconds. This is going to work. Okay. So five so minutes. Four, four minutes and 45 seconds. So while I have my last, well, that depends if it's ready when it comes out. Ooh, wait, I got to check to make sure it's done. Oh, that's right. It might not How be How long will done. the frosting take to put together? The frosting does not take very long. You just got to wait to melt the butter, which is I'm going to go ahead and start doing in that five minutes. So, all right. right. So these five minutes, we're starting on the frosting. So Starshine, I know that you were baking along at home there in the Empire of Rivermore. So go ahead and start getting your icing. So you're going to want a medium-sized pan because we're going to make the icing in the pan. We don't use a mixer for the icing. Okay. Um, so we're getting our medium sized pan, put it on low temperature and melt that last stick of butter. Cause you know, this one calls for three sticks. The whole recipe calls for three sticks. Right. Two of the sticks are already in the cake and that cake right. is in the oven. Right. Um, and unlike traditional cakes, like for me, when I bake a cake, it's from a box, but I have to wait for it to fully cool before I get my from the plastic tin frosting you should put it on otherwise it melts everywhere um and you're saying that this frosting needs right. to be put on while the cake is still that is 100 percent correct every other cake in the whole world that i know of you wait until the cake is 100 percent completely cooled before you put the icing on or the icing melts this icing and i'm again i'm not the science person so if you ask me why i can't tell you this icing goes on the cake hot if you wait till it's cold it doesn't set so the heat, I guess, I'll be, you know, using logic, the heat makes the icing set. So um, you want it to go on while the cake is hot. Oh, you got people bringing you food. Look at you. So oh, after, after, after this, after after this stream, I'm going to ditch out on poor Gavin for a few minutes and go get myself some lunch. I'm going to eat in front of you all on camera. So Starshine yeah. was sharing with us a bit of video. It looked like she was melting the butter. Yeah, let's melt our butter. Yes, so I've, we've got a video of her in her pan and she is melting the butter, giving it a nice stir there. I officially have chocolate stains on this tunic, but I already have, uh, you can't see, I already have uh, stains from the bottoms of pans, char stains. So this is my work tunic. So I guess a chocolate <laughs> stain adds right in, yeah. That's what I get for eating the batter, you know, getting chocolate all myself. Yeah. I knew the I minute. Should. All right. I knew the minute I, I saw should. her in there. What? Get busy. Oh, yeah. That's her work uniform, y'all. That's my work <laughs> uniform, right? So, Starshine, I think you had a question. No, I was going to make a comment. I'm all messy, too. I should have been smart. And I'm the one that a couple years ago bought your um, food fundraiser um, aprons. Oh. And I should have been warning that. <laughs> Fun. I should wear an apron and I don't. Um, mostly because I don't like things that tie around my waist because I'm fat. So I'm like, I don't want anything that ties around my waist. Um, and and then I, when I'm cooking, I have a horrible habit of instead of wiping my hands on the, you know, the dish, the, the dish towel that's over by the oven, I wipe them on my shirt. <laughs> so after I cook, the back part of my shirt is always wet and covered with stuff because I've wiped my hands on my shirt. And I'm like, that's, I, and I do wash my hands many, 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 many times. So I'm like, I shouldn't do that. It's probably not very sanitary and people are grossed out now, but I have a really my bad. Do okay. I take it off the oven? Yeah, when I mean, your butter is melted, you don't want to overheat it. Mine's still melting because I had it on low. I feel about wiping your hands on your shirt. Do you do that too? I do that I have, so bad. 
I am a very bad habit of doing that. <laughs> right? And I'm like, I know I shouldn't do this. And I try to stop myself, but I just, I do it. I wipe my hands on my shirt and then I'm like, oh, this is bad. And then I'll go, you know, but I usually put on a clean shirt before I cook and then take it off afterwards. Cause yeah, I know what I do. <laughs> my father used to say that if you, if you cook and you don't make a mess, you're not doing it right. Well, I try to clean up as I go because. My kitchen's really small, and like I said, uh, I don't have a dishwasher, and so I, I do try to keep things clean as I go. So my brother is a horrific, messy cook. My timer did just go off, but I'm going to give it a few seconds because I know it's not done. Um, so, But if you're cooking yours, um, you might check it. Um, but yeah, my brother, he's a horrible, messy cook, and cleaning the kitchen after he cooks, it's like, oh my God. It's like, Rob, really? Really? Can you not wipe up a single thing while you're going? Anyway, so to test, oh, the butter's done. Take it off the oven. It's starting to boil. Test your cake. I use uh, kebabs, you know, the kebab holders. This is what I tend to use. It's really, it's smaller than a knife. So you're going to, um, you know, check your cake, open your oven, pull out the rack. Yeah, I can see it already. The middle's not done. So, yeah, it came, out, it came out gooey, so it's obviously not done, and I'm going to say it probably needs another 10 minutes, so no, we are not going to finish the frosting. I can show you how to mix it, though. What I'll, Here's what I'm going to do, is show people how to mix the frosting and then leave mine on the stove to not get cold, and, um, and then people, when their cakes are done, they can pour the frosting on them when they come out of the oven. That, I think, is the best way. That way I'm not bumping Gavin's time. Um, so you've got your melted butter in your in a saucepan. Like and you need to a, wait for them to be completely cool before you ice your cake, right? No, not on this one. That's what we've we've said multiple times. Normally, every other cake in the universe, you wait till it's completely cool. This cake, you must ice while put the icing on it while it's hot, or the icing will not set. So this is a very strange cake that you must put the icing on while it's hot, all right? But every other cake in the planet, you never do that, ever. Okay? Sorry, I missed that. I was busy oh, putting in for credits. Right. <laughs> no worries. So we had a question come in on Discord. What types of fundraisers work best in our kingdom, the CK? Uh, while you're showing us how to put the frosting together. The ever popular pie in the face seems to be pretty, um, pretty standard. Uh, sorry, I'm getting my, um, my taste tablespoon. Sorry, my tablespoon was wet, so I need to find my paper towels and I don't know where they went, but I'm just gonna wipe it on my, my very clean dish rag, okay? Or dish towel. And not your work tunic. Not my tunic. Um, so we're going to take six. Tea, uh, the recipe calls for four or six. I always use the six. It makes the icing just a little bit more chocolatey. And I like chocolate. Um, so again, I I level it on the edge of my, my Hershey cocoa container. The pie in the faces tend to work really well. Um, the fundraisers. We're going back to the fundraisers. fundraisers. People have a lot of fun with that, especially when you get someone who's I don't know, really hated, really popular. The, so for those of you who don't know what pie in the face is, is that we auction off pies, um, the right to put a pie into someone's face. Um, and then we did one year a counter uh, bid where the person who was getting pied could bid to then take that pie and put it in someone else's face. And right, that, that was fun. <laughs> Yeah, and that's when Dolan and I pied each other. It was. Okay. So this is why you don't chat while you're cooking. I put in four tablespoons of cocoa. It is four teaspoons of cocoa. <laughs> well, you said you liked it extra chocolate. Well, that's going to that. kill people. <laughs> no, that's going to be true. All right, I love you guys. <laughs> I'm going to take this pan, dump it out, and add another stick of butter. <laughs> Yeah, I, I normally don't talk to people while I'm cooking. This I don't drink while I'm cooking either. I have found out the hard way. If I have a glass of wine while I'm cooking, dinner comes out messed up. 
So I, I'm going to laugh at myself. This happens to everyone. Reading carefully, dump out this mess, and do it again. All right, so Star Shiny should have been four teaspoons. Well, six, because she's doing it extra chocolatey. Teaspoons of cocoa powder into the melted butter for frosting, as opposed to table spoons, which is what she was using because I made her talk. All right, so while Surreal fixes the frosting mess, uh, her time will likely come up as done. Uh, we'll see her again either to the tail end of Sir Gavin's presentation or right at the very beginning of uh, Ayanka's presentation. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to finish. I'm so sorry, y'all. <laughs> she just messed up. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go ahead. You know, it happens to everybody. Everybody messes up. Everybody does. So, yes, and I'm yep, wondering so. what if I should just wait with mine or if I should continue. What you're gonna do, Sunshine, um, is that you 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 have the butter. I'm sorry, what? Starshine, right? Is it sunshine yes. or starshine? Okay, starshine. You're starshine. gonna have your butter and your cocoa. You mix that with six tablespoons of milk. Teaspoons. Teaspoons. No, no. Wait, Four, teaspoons it's, of cocoa powder. It's listen, six teaspoons of cocoa, teaspoons cocoa, four, I'm sorry, bleh, six tablespoons milk, okay? Six teaspoons cocoa, six tablespoons milk, and a box of powdered sugar, which is three and a half cups. If you don't, it, Walmart sells it in the bag, so I have to measure it out. But our standard box of powdered sugar has three and a half cups. So again, it's one stick butter, six teaspoons cocoa, six tablespoons milk, one box of powdered sugar. Or three and a half cups. If or you three have and it. a half cups if you can't get it in a box. Like, yeah. yeah. So Walmart sells it in a big bag. So I have to measure it out. Now, I had okay. all my stuff laid out before. And I did not see the powdered sugar. So uh -huh. I am going to leave and go get powdered sugar. <laughs> I do mess up. <laughs> like I said, like 10 minutes before I started cooking, I was, it was like, yeah, it was a good 15 minutes. I was making sure I was getting out all my ingredients. And I had forgotten, you know, I have a lot of this in my head. And I had read through it. And I had forgotten I needed milk for the, the, the icing. And I had to go to the stripes in the corner to grab a gallon of milk. So I was like. Okay, <laughs> but yeah. All right. So, I'm sorry. So, <laughs> Don't ask okay. me. We'll see the finished cake. We'll see the finished cake, <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll the finish cake later on in the afternoon. <laughs> So stay tuned. Uh, coming up in the next few minutes, we have Sir Gavin, who will be talking about feasts. So we're going to continue the food thing. His presentation is for your food hole, uh, talking about how to do feasts of different sizes. So if you're watching us on YouTube, stay tuned. The live stream is going to cut off, and then we'll be back on in a few minutes. If you're here joining us on Discord, um, in just a moment, it'll be open rain while I frantically get set up for the next one. Okay, so, I'm going to turn off my screen, all right? <laughs> yeah, you can turn off your